Hey guys, welcome back to Coins of Crypto. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin over the last week. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are worried that it's been heated. Uh, some of you guys are more into the FOMO mode, but we're going to take a look at it, look at the charts, look at some ETF news, and look at some other metrics. See where it's going to go, see if it's going to go to zero or if it's going to go much higher. I know I have my opinion and I'll share that in a minute, but let's hop into the charts now. So, this is from TradingView, and right now we're sitting at 68,400 and some change. Uh, we just came down from the all-time high, Bitcoin's all-time high, it was 24 hours ago, at $7,184 US dollars. So, we're doing pretty good. We're still right here. This this is a looking like it's somewhat of a, maybe a sideways trading consolidation area, but we're still hitting all-time highs, so I don't know if you really can even call it that. But I know this price action here, it's pretty heated and a lot of people are getting a little worried about that thinking okay maybe this is the top right do i need to sell do i need to get out of here well i don't have a crystal ball i can't tell you that but let's take a look at some things first off let's set this to a weekly just so we can zoom out a bit here and we will look at a broader picture of bitcoin's history on this chart so let's get rid of this ad real quick so right oh look we got another ad so right here we've got the 2017 uh, bull run coming down had some crypto winter we had the pandemic scare and then we went into the 21 bull run right so we're sitting right right at about the peak of the bull run last year but this is what i really want to point out so from right here from the 2017 bull run all the way to the 2018 peak excuse me 2021 peak bitcoin went up 252 percent so we could go up 252% from where we're at right now, potentially. Of course, there's a few theories on this, diminishing returns, things like that, but Bitcoin has a long way to go. I don't think 250% is out of the question, personally. We'll see. Um, let's hop into some coin market cap here. So just to kind of give a feel for the market today before we get into the B, uh, ETF and other Bitcoin stories I got. So Bitcoin's just down in the last 24 hours. Remember, we hit an all-time high yesterday. It's only down 0.3%, 68,400. That's that's phenomenal. Ethereum hit 4,000 yesterday. They're not even down a percent. So market's pretty flat. We do have some gainers that I can show you real quick, and, and that'll be another video for later. But WorldCoin, Gala, or Gala, whatever it is, Graph, some AI plays, some Metaverse plays are moving. So market's healthy. Nothing to fear about the market right now. Not that I'm seeing. In fact, I've got a story at the very end here about DeFi and, and it's uh, looks good. Okay, so let's just, let's get the bad news out first. So this is Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF fund, um, you know, which they, they converted to the their ETF GBTC. Um, and this is all in millions. This is dollars. So they were out 303 million yesterday. That's what their uh, total sell was, 303 million. Not their worst day, not the worst day that they've dumped on Bitcoin, but uh, let's see what it was the worst. It was back in January, 641 million out. So it is decreasing somewhat, but this is pretty average overall, if you can see that chart. So here are the big four ETFs. You got iBit, FBTC, ArcBTC, and BitB. So IBTC here, BlackRock on the bottom, just killing it, of course, crushing everybody else. And then I believe FBTC is green here. So per week, only 6,300 Bitcoin can be mined. So 6,300 Bitcoin every week are added to the supply of Bitcoin. It cannot go higher. In fact, it can only go lower once we hit the halving in 40 something days, however many days it is now in April. So. Just think of it this way. All those Bitcoin are being eaten up right away. If the miners aren't holding on to them, all those Bitcoin are being eaten up by these ETFs. So that is pretty impressive. And if you guys know anything about supply and demand, that means the supply is going down and the demand is probably going to be increasing as a result. So this one, and these are all from Holdle 15 Capital on X. Absolutely should follow them if you're not. Uh, there was a poll. They do, they do some fun kind of engagement things here. But anyway, this, this engagement shows 
how many Bitcoin were added per week in the ETFs. So first week, 16,000. Best week, 44,000. This week we did 33,614. So second best week ever, not too bad. Worst week was uh, an outflow of 10,200. So we've been, that, and that was week three. We haven't seen a, a negative amount, a, an outflow of Bitcoin from these ETFs since then uh, overall. Of course, Grayscale every week has been, but they've been getting eaten up by the other ETFs. Okay, and here we have, this is in dollars in millions. So 223 million in to the ETFs yesterday. And that looks to be fairly average here. Our, our peak inflow was 675 million in February. It looks like it was the 28th, I think, maybe the 27th. So we haven't had a negative day since the 1st of March. So we are looking pretty good. These ETFs are killing it, killing it, absolutely crushing. So I don't have a whole lot of fear. ETFs are eating the supply up. They're gonna cause demand to rise. And I'm gonna guess that I think institutional, if institutions can foam with, they can certainly also succumb to fear. But I think they have, most likely, some of these people have stronger hands than some of the retail people that are gonna be coming in soon. And that's okay. It's okay if you've never been around a market like this and you, it gets you you know, a little nervous and you sell or whatever. But I think a lot of these Bitcoin are gonna be held for a long time and the potential supply of Bitcoin is gonna be decreasing. Uh, because these guys are holding it, the, the circulating supply, I should say, or the available supply that, that you're going to be able to buy on markets and whatnot. So this one comes from Watch Your Guru on Twitter. And this is Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock. And he has something pretty interesting to say here. And I'm going to play it for you guys. Uh, you've been hearing it for years if you've been around, but I can't believe that we're hearing Larry Fink say this. So Without further ado, let's let's play this. That there's a lot of merit to it. There's a lot of opportunity. It is a great store, and this is where you can debate. Is it a good store? But you know how it's made. A bunch of computers figure out. But there's problems. only. But the issue is if there, if people believe that it can be a, an asset that can be cross border. Right. And let's be clear: if you're in a country where you're fearful of your government, and maybe this is one of the reasons why China has banned it. Mm -hmm. If you're in a government where you're, if you're in a country where you're fearful of your future, fearful of your right. government, or you're frightened that your government is devaluing its currency by too much deficits. Like us. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> go the okay. little elephant. I'll let you guys go watch the rest of this. But Larry Fink is saying that Bitcoin is a, uh, it's digital gold and it's a great long-term store of value. And that's crazy. That one of the biggest institutional companies on the planet is now saying that and, and being pro Bitcoin. So check this out at Watcher Guru. You can find the whole clip. I think it's, is it Fox Business? Yeah, if you want to search YouTube, you can probably find it there too, but that's absolutely insane. Crazy. This is something people have been talking about saying for years and now the institutions are picking up on the rhetoric and passing it out to Fox News. Of course, Fox News, whether they believe it or not, they have to pretend that they're, you know, on the other side and, and give some controversy or an adverse opinion or outlook on it, whatever. So, okay, so Larry Fink, more BlackRock news, right? So this is pretty big, actually. Uh, another BlackRock mutual fund can now allocate Bitcoin ETFs. And I found this at blockworks.co. Uh, a bunch of sites have it, though. So you can choose your favorite site and find it. However, look at this. Uh, three BlackRock funds, three BlackRock funds, now have the ability to allocate Bitcoin ETFs in them. So... What are those funds? Of course, you've got IBIT, which is their main BTF or ETF uh, for Bitcoin. And then you also have now, and this they just released this news, you can get the Strategic Income Opportunities Portfolio. I think that's AUM. I can't remember that one. And then the BlackRock Strate Strategic Global Bond Fund. So those are all three of those. Of course, one is primarily Bitcoin, but those other two can now also and do also have the Bitcoin ETFs available in them. So that's really big news. That's even more Bitcoin going out of the market and into BlackRock's uh, under their management. All right, so if that stuff wasn't bullish enough for you guys, check this out. Bitcoin whales, and a whale is just someone who holds an absolute ton of any coin, in this case, Bitcoin. <clears throat> so this comes from Cointelegraph. 
Bitcoin whales not selling despite 70K. BTC holdings grow. Uh, growth is parabolic. So they've got some graphs here, some charts here. So this one, this is uh, sub thousand, but check this out. This chart, oops, is 1,000 to 10,000 Bitcoin. And look at this, the blue line here, straight up. These whales are not selling. So if the whales aren't selling, should you be? These guys have a lot of money. They probably didn't just fall into it. Eh, maybe some of them did. But they are holding and they are increasing. So something to think about, right? Okay. And lastly, we'll, we'll do a couple kind of kind of fun things here. Um, this is just DeFi. I'm going to do a video on this in a, in a bit here. DeFi total value locked reaches 100 billion as Bitcoin pumps sentiment. So this is from DeFi Llama. You can just see the TVL here, the amount of money locked into crypto chains uh, for everything from Ethereum to Solana and, and all the layer twos and everything in between is at 100 billion again. So that's a lot of money. A huge increase from just a few months ago too, from October. October was pretty much so low for TVL locked in the last bear market. So uh, you guys can go to CryptoQuant if you want and check out some of their stats. They give you some trends. They give you some short-term indicators, long-term indicators. You can check out the miners positions. This is just their intro. They actually have some charts as well here that you can click on. Now this is free to use, but if you want to go back to say the 2017 bull market and look at all that data or even, you know, 2013 or something, uh, to current day, you're going to have to pay and it's, it's not too much. Um, I'm, I'm not advocating for crypto quant or anything. I'm just letting you guys know about it. Um, they don't pay me. I have no affiliation with them at all, but I do stop by every now and then. And I do appreciate their charts that I find on X. So. Uh, if you go to summary, you can uh, just check some of their their key stats out here. Uh, I'll pull one chart up that I do like. You can check out the total flow. You can see the inflows and outflows of Bitcoin from exchanges. What miners are doing? Are they selling? Are they holding? Things like that. Um, you can see if the premium's hitting yet. So uh, liquidations. Uh, look at that. There's that liquidation that I reported on a while ago when Bitcoin... Uh, had its all time high and then was essentially uh, 1.1 billion in liquidations right after something like that. So yeah, RSI is a little high, so who knows? We might cool off for a minute. Wouldn't be bad. Be pretty healthy to be honest. So anyway, cryptoquant.com. If you guys got extra money, you can throw it at them if you want, or you can throw it at a meme coin. I don't care. So I'll turn my screen off here, camera off. So this chart, uh, again, I can only go back to 2021 because I don't have a crypto quant account that's active right now. I should probably re, re up mine, but I don't. So this is exchange reserves. I, I found this interesting. Uh, it'd be much better if you could see the, uh, years prior to this, but as you can see, this is the amount of reserve of Bitcoin on the spot exchanges here. So your Coinbase, Kraken, uh, Binance, things like that. Uh, we could go to derivatives uh, or whatever, or we could just do all of them. But as you guys can see here, it's decreasing. Uh, it decreased in the bear market too. I think the spot was a little bit better looking. Yeah, it kind of stayed flat here in the bear market. Then we had a big drop, big drop. I'm, I'm guessing a bunch of whales bought right here. Maybe even some OTC because the price action didn't change. But typically as this is dropping, Bitcoin's price is increasing. So... This is pretty big news. So when these guys run out of uh, Bitcoin or, or Ethereum or whatever it is, but in this case, Bitcoin, it's going to be all, all in the peer-to-peer uh, -peer stuff. So us trading on Coinbase. So if you're going to be selling, you might be selling at a premium. And, and it's just a supply and demand thing right here, right? So as supply decreases, the price is increasing. The demand is increasing. So... Just thought that was interesting and thought I'd share it with you guys. But we'll wrap it up there. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about Bitcoin, how I feel about it. I think Bitcoin is going to continue going up. We could have a correction in the short term. I don't know. Not not a big concern for me. Maybe we just go sideways for a while. We're not that out of the norm. I know we've hit an all-time high, but you got to think we've had inflation. We've had uh, 
quantitative, quantitative easing, uh, all these things that really have kind of messed with the value of the US dollar. So maybe even our uh, 70,000, you know, in 2021 would be equal to 60,000 right now. I don't know, I don't have that in front of me, but, but maybe that's what's causing us to have an all time high before the halving. Something to think about and somebody much smarter than me probably has that chart and I'll look for it at some point and maybe report it back to you guys if I can find it. But anyway, I'll wrap it up there. If you guys like this or found it informative, give me a like, subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate that. And we'll see you in the next one.